Hey, what's up? It's Jared with Ditch Auto. I've got the Nikon D500 here, and we're gonna talk about the things that I did to customize and set up this camera for the style and the way that I shoot. Now, these cameras are highly customizable. That's one of the things that I've really enjoyed about Nikons, but there are some settings that I change when I initially get any camera, and then as I start to use the camera a little bit, I figure out ways that might make it a little bit easier to use, and uh, definitely that can come down to an individual style. But one of the things that I love about the internet and especially videos like this is that you get to learn a little bit more about how people use cameras differently and maybe one of those things works for you maybe it doesn't but we all learn from each other and grow by figuring out what each other does uniquely to improve their photography and so in this video we're going to look at how I've customized and set up the Nikon D500 and I hope that you learned something interesting definitely let me know down in the comment section below what your favorite setting change was and if there's some Thing that you changed on your Nikon D500 that I didn't talk about in this video, definitely let me know. But let's jump in and get started. All right, so let's take a look at some of the settings that I configure in the camera here. So the playback menu is an interesting one that most people don't really think too much about. But under playback display options, there is the option to show the focus point. Now, it, sometimes on the back of the display of your camera, it's kind of hard to tell whether or not an image is in focus. And of course, we can zoom in and all that good stuff. But if you want something that's kind of an easy feedback way to figure this out, go and select for basic photo info, choose focus point, and you can choose these essentially by just toggling them on and off. So you'll come over here and just go next to them and hit the little line or uh, just hit to the right and it selects it or deselects it and so I set focus point as the one that I really only care about the rest of this stuff is is information that I can wait to look at when I view the image on the computer but I definitely want to make sure that the image is in focus and so I choose that and then when I go and preview an image in the playback so for example take a look at these images you can see that I pretty much just had the focus point centered during most of these photos and so you can see exactly where the camera was focused. And if you use a single point focus like I do, you'll see that move around from time to time. But this is really important to have turned on if you are allowing the camera to choose autofocus from anywhere on the sensor, because then you can tell whether or not the camera focused on the subject that you meant to focus on, or if it focused on the one slightly behind or next to your intended subject. So under the photo shooting menu, we're going to go ahead and look at some different settings here. Under uh, this setting, you can just toggle down and look through some of these options. But as we continue to scroll down, we will see a image size. And so we could look at image size and see exactly what size of image we're capturing. In JPEG, we could set it to large, medium, or small. And then of course, in the raw, we can set it to the size of raw image that we want to capture. And this is important because I always shoot raw images. We're going to talk about setting that as a default here in a second, but you can choose the size of raw image because the camera is going to choose a pretty large 20.7 megapixel image. That's going to be a big file size, but if you don't need that file size and you just want raw images because you get better post-processing options that we'll talk about here in a second, you can choose medium raw and have uh, the ability to take many more photos on your camera because you'll be utilizing utilizing less storage space. So I'll go ahead and leave my settings set there. We want to go into NEF raw recording and we want to choose raw and uh, we'll use lossless compressed. Now you can also go down to uncompressed if you want it just to be the largest file possible, but lossless compressed has been a good option for me. And uh, compressed is adding a layer of compression to your raw file, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, so lossless compressed is pretty good. It still gives me as much detail as I would absolutely love to have, and the compression isn't uh, really even noticeable at all. So I'll choose lossless compressed. And the reason that we would want to shoot raw with our images is so that we have more data in the image. If we're not shooting raw, perhaps maybe we have that set to uh, to turned off, which we can easily do by going in here and toggling that option. Then you're not going to get the full image that you need in order to pull back some of the details into areas of your photo that may have been overexposed or underexposed. And then also with color correcting your image, perhaps maybe your image 
came out a little too warm or a little too cool. You're gonna have much more data to work with there in your image because the raw image is the full image without compression. A JPEG image has been compressed and so any data that the image does not need to display the way that it is, is gonna be scrapped out of that in order to save on the file size. Now still under the photo shooting menu, we're gonna wanna go to set picture control and I'll set it to neutral. By default, it comes to standard, but there are a lot of different options to choose from here. And depending on what you like, you may even go with flat. Now I prefer to do all of my image post-processing in software, and that includes the JPEGs. And usually the picture control really only applies to the JPEGs, but I've noticed that it does definitely affect the raw image sometimes. When I go and put an image into Lightroom, it seems that there is something added to it or changed to it and I would prefer it not to have really anything done. So essentially what some of this does by setting it to neutral you're telling the camera not to add any contrast or any different changes to the image, no sharpening. There's a lot of different things that the camera will try and do. You can set it to vivid and vivid will really make those colors pop but it's going to make your image look maybe a little surreal and it's not going to be as realistic. I would rather if I wanted to add some vividness to my photos, do it in Adobe Lightroom. So I either choose neutral or flat, but most often I found neutral to be a good option. Now moving over to the movie shooting menu, there are lots of options that we could adjust here too, but I'm going to adjust the frame size and frame rate to 4K 30. Of course, if you're not interested in shooting 4K, you can choose one of the other options. This camera will shoot up to HD at 1920 by 1080 with 60p, which is okay for a slow motion. You could definitely slow your footage down to X and get some of that slow motion action. Uh, but I do shoot pretty much everything in 4K and prefer to shoot in a 4K option. So there are lots of different frame rate and frame size options here, but the one that you'll find me in is the highest 4K that I could get in, which is 4K 30p. Under the movie shooting menu, I set the picture control definitely for video because you cannot make many changes here. So if I have my picture control for photos set to neutral, I will leave it set to neutral. Otherwise, sometimes I will come in and actually set it to flat because I want as little added to the picture when I'm shooting video as possible because video in these cameras is harder to color correct and harder to adjust later than it is a photo because we can't shoot raw video out of one of these cameras. So it's important that we start with a flat image so we can do our post-production, our color correction. We can add contrast and sharpening and all of that stuff in software once we see what our image looks like on a bigger display. By default, the camera also comes to the microphone sensitivity set to auto sensitivity, which I don't like because if there are quiet moments in what you're shooting, it boosts the volume of the audio in the camera and it ends up sounding really bad. So I like to set it to manual sensitivity and most of the time I have a microphone plugged in to the side here as well. And so I'll set the microphone's volume to a certain level and then I'll set the camera's volume to a level that seems to work well and I'll do my fine tuning on my Deity video mic. I'll make sure to link to the mic that I use down in the description below. So we're going to go all the way down to custom control assignment and select that. And you can see here, we could see an image of our camera and it shows the different buttons that are available on our camera and we can set those up accordingly. Now, some of the buttons here that show a left and a right, like for example, PV here, which is the preview button and it shows this option and then it shows this option off. Basically what that means is that you can either use the button as a momentary button, which pushes down and then will select an option, or you can use it as a whole hold option. So when you hold down the button, then you can rotate between settings. And so buttons that are like that are split here. And then buttons that don't have that option are full width like this. So if I don't want to use the preview, which essentially the preview button allows us to preview the depth of field of the image that we're taking. If you don't find that useful, you can select this and you can actually change it to a different function. Now I leave that one alone, but I do change what the FN1 button, the function one button down at the bottom of the camera here. So this little button down here, FN1, I change what that does. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and you can see it set to my menu right now. What that allows me to do is quickly access my menu and we'll talk about how to set up my menu here in a second. So here's that function button. When I press it, it takes me right into my menu and I have some items in here set up that are quick access because the Nikon menu 
menu, as I'm sure you've noticed, is very long and there's lots of options that are here, which is awesome, but it takes you quite some time to get through them. And so customizing your own menu is actually a really cool feature. And so that's a thing that I set that function button to do so that I can get into that quickly and get access to the options that I want to quickly control. I want to take a quick second and thank Lens Pro to Go, the sponsor of this video. Sometimes I want to try a camera out before buying it, or in the case of this video, learn how to use a camera so that I can further grow as a photographer and also figure out some new ways to bring some good information to all of you. And so I go to Lens Pro to Go and do a search for Nikon D500, and then I can see that camera. I can see how much it costs to actually rent it and give it a try. There's there's all sorts of accessories. They have all the Nikon lenses you could possibly want, including even the latest in Nikon cameras and uh, lots of accessories from not only just lenses, but tripod stabilization, lighting, audio accessories, and all of that great stuff. So the next time that you are looking to maybe rent something or try it out before you buy it, if you go to Lens Pro to Go and use the coupon code Jared, which is my first name, J-E-R-A-D, you will save 15% off at checkout. So go to lensprotogo.com, use that coupon code, and try out some new gear today. Now from here we have a lot of different other custom controls that we can set. The multi-selector center button that I have right here can be used to do different things. For example, if I'm in shooting mode, I can have it set to reset. In playback mode, it will zoom in, and in live mode, it will reset. Essentially what it means by reset is it will reset the autofocus point to the center. And so if I have that set, that is the function, and that is actually where I want it to be set. I'll talk about that here in a second. So the shutter speed and aperture lock are something that you can also control. And so if we set that, we can turn that on and off. And essentially that will allow us to lock those in place so we don't end up making a change to them on accident. And then we also have some additional settings, multi-selector, release button to use dial, reverse indicators, and some stuff just to kind of configure the feel of the camera and how it operates. Also, the light switch here, we can enable that to do something else by having it enable LCD, or also have it enable info and uh, information display and the backlighting, which might be interesting uh, for you if you go into that menu. So just to show you what that does, it's going to be a little hard to see. You can see the LEDs down here in the corner when I rotate the the uh, the switch here you can see that they light up but nothing changes on the back of the display if I go into menu and then choose the controls and set that to and information display now when I don't have anything on the back of the display if I rotate that dial it also brings me into the information display which might be really useful for you if you want to see this information on your uh, on your monitor in a quick and easy accessible way of course that does the same thing as pressing the info button right here all right so let's move down into movie mode settings we can choose custom control assignment for movie mode so that those buttons that we were looking at configuring earlier do something different when we are in a movie mode so you can see function one is not enabled to anything that's where the function button started off in the photo mode as well but I can also set this to a variety of different things you can see there are lots of different options here uh, for power aperture exposure compensation index marketing view photo shooting info or then even none so we can set this to basically do any setting that we want and just configure that and you'll notice that it actually changes the configuration of another button so the two buttons don't actually do the same thing and then that is the end of the custom settings menu so now we're going to move down into the setup menu you can see we have options here to for example format our memory card I'm a huge fan of formatting my memory card in the camera all the time I never format it on a computer I always format it within the camera I think that's the smartest way to go. We also can set our time zone and date from within the camera. It's important to do that because if your time is not set correctly, then your images are not going to sync up with anywhere else. And you could even see here, for whatever reason, mine is not set correctly. And so I can move that over to Los Angeles, Seattle, because I am over on the west coast of the United States. And then I can make sure that that is set correctly and then go into the date and time if it is not. It's important to have this set because we use a lot of services these days that will display our images in a order in which they were taken and it's important to have that set up especially if you're using multiple cameras you definitely want to have your images loading in at the appropriate times and not have photos showing up because they were an hour off or maybe even a couple of days off 
All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and set the copyright information. This is important whether you are shooting professionally or not because it writes the data to your image as to who took the photo and it also gives a copyright notice. So to set this, come to this menu, tap to the right to enable it, and then go down to artist, tap to the right, and then tap in your name or company name on the back of the camera to write that data. So we'll go ahead and just put my name in here. And then when you're done, make sure to hit the OK button and then toggle down to copyright. And I'm going to put in all rights reserved. If you make a mistake, simply hit the trash can button. And then hit OK and then hit OK again because if you hit the menu button or any other button it's going to erase everything that you did and then you can of course go back into that menu and make sure that that information stayed. So it's going to write that information to the file which means it can be viewable when you look at the file on a computer and of course somebody can use software to remove that but in the past I've seen images that I've captured on other people's blogs and used in different ways and it's been very easy for me to issue a takedown request to them by simply just emailing them. You don't want your photos to end up somewhere, especially if it's family photos, and you definitely don't want your photos to end up on a stock photography website. You want to make sure that you at least have some sort of recourse. And by setting the copyright information to all rights reserved, you're giving people no rights to use your photo. Of course, there are a lot of different types of copyrights that you can add to an image, such as a type of Creative Commons copy license. I'll make sure to link to the Creative Commons website down in the description below this video. Now I talked earlier about the My Menu that I get to easily by hitting this Function 1 button. Adding items to My Menu makes it easy for you to get to menu items that you're going to access quite often. You can see here that I've added internal timer shooting so that I can shoot time lapses more quickly. I've enabled HDR mode here so I can get to that mode easily if, in case I want to shoot an HDR image. For example, if I'm doing some uh, landscape photography or something that I want to make look a little more edgy. I also want quick access to to my microphone sensitivity so I could change the volume level of my microphone like we looked at earlier. And then also if I want to switch between shooting 4K, maybe to go down into HD and shoot some 60p footage, I can easily access that. Now to add items, you simply just go to add items and it's going to ask you to go into whatever menu your setting is going to be in. So for example, we can go into photo shooting menu, tap to the right, and then go and choose the option that we want. So for example, maybe you want to choose your storage folder to write images to a different folder or you want to come through and be able to change your image quality or image size really easily you could just simply select that by hitting the OK button and it's going to go ahead and add that to the menu right now you can then change the position and put where you want that to be I'll choose the bottom and then I'll go ahead and hit the center button here and then you can see that image size has been added. If you want to remove an item just simply tap there, go down to the item and then select it and then hit OK and it's going to remove that once you confirm. It will now be removed from your My Menu. And so the My Menu is nice because it just gives you quick easy access and I highly recommend that you take advantage of that. You can also add tabs to this as well so you can have multiple menus under My Menu. Maybe you want one for photo shooting and one for video shooting. You can customize that, uh, but of course adding too many things to My Menu, you might as well just go back into the menu where they existed originally. So I just choose the things that I uh, quickly get to most that I need access most. Now I typically make changes to my autofocus settings on the fly and there are a couple ways to do that with this camera. There's this nifty little button down here where you can toggle between autofocus and manual focus and there's a button in the center of it. When you press and hold down on that button you can see where it says in yellow there AFS and I can actually switch between AFS and AFF. And so essentially that's taking me between a single shot autofocus, which is good for shooting standstill subjects. For example, if you're doing portraits, what, what that does is when you press down the shutter button, it achieves focus and then it does not continuously search for focus. Now, if you hold down this button and go to AFF, it's going to continuously search for focus. So when I hold down this button, the shutter button, it's going to continuously follow focus, whatever the action is. And so if your subject is moving, for example, you're shooting sports or some sort of action or children or something that are moving around fast, you're going to want to be in this mode so that you can have the camera
camera following that subject. The reason that there are these two different features is so that when your subject is standing still, the camera is not looking for moving things to achieve focus on. That would be kind of annoying if you're trying to take portraits and there's like cars in the background or somebody walking in the background and the camera decides to fo focus on that person instead. So you can choose between those two different options based on whatever it is that you're shooting at the time. All right, well, thanks for sticking with me there. I hope that you learned something interesting about your Nikon D500. If you did, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel because that is how you get notified when I put out new videos. I definitely have some links for you down in the description below to some things that I've used with my Nikon D500. So I hope that you find those interesting. Clicking on those helps support the channel. But that's gonna do it for this video. I appreciate you sticking through it. Thanks so much and I hope to see you back here in the next one. Take care.